Hello, it's Sarah. Happy Halloween. It's next Monday. It's this coming Monday. I'm painting, you guys. So in today's video, I'm going to be painting these pumpkins by Renee Mullins. Plum Purdy Designs. Uh, they're called Purdy Pumpkins. And if you go to the website, I will put it in the link. This is my extra light. Um, you can download this pattern for free and paint along with me. Um, you can do this on a little gift bag. You can do it on a circle, round, wood. You can do it on whatever substrate you happen to have. I was able to get them cut out for me on the Glowforge because we have a laser cutter. All right, so what we're gonna do is gather our supplies and then I will paint a couple of them along with you. I'm a fast painter, so I have these two that I'm gonna base coat um, and we'll get started. Um, the first thing you're gonna need are the colors. So I just wanna share with you, I don't always have the colors that she uses, so I use what I have. Um, I think I mixed the base coat, the, the bottom color, the orange, I think she uses um, Tangelo orange, and I did have it, let's see, Tangelo, so this is Tangelo orange, but I did, it's, there's nothing in the bottle, so, and I went, I did go to Hobby Lobby and they didn't have it, so I think I took some cadmium orange and like, no, I just bought this, I don't know, I mixed colors, but I think for this one, I'm just going to use this jack-o'-lantern orange. It's a little lighter, so maybe I will just add a little bit of this darker orange to it, but it's okay. The only, the only reason I, I want to make sure it's not too light or too dark is just so that my highlights and my shading show up. But you can always pop up your highlight with a little buttermilk, or you can darken your shade with a little burnt umber. So, you know, we're bottle babies in the decorative painting world, so we tend to just operate with the color they, sh they say to use. But that being said, you can do it any way you want. And as always, don't do it if it's not fun. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to move these guys out of the way, and I'm going to share with you how I base coat. Um, these are the two I'm going to do for demonstration. So I'm going to, I just picked out, I think these two were close enough. <clears throat> I have pa paper on the back because when I tried to cut them, I etched instead of cut at first. So I'm still getting the hang of the Glowforge. All right. To base coat, I'm just going to use this. This is a Sure Touch Oval Wash Brush. And I, I've been using it so it's wet at the moment. But I love these for base coating. And I got this, um, this uh, suggestion from her name is um, oh, it'll come to me oh, I can't think of it um, I'm gonna go ahead and mix up this paint to base coat so I'm just gonna use this like styrofoam plate thing and I'm gonna put out this pumpkin it's called jack-o'-lantern orange and it's a brand new bottle I'm going to put out a little bit of Joe Sonia all-purpose sealer and just mix that in there with it. I'm running out of my big... This thing has lasted me for like 20 years, I swear. Okay, that's a lot. And I'm going to put out a little bit of that cadmium orange just to make it a little darker. So see, that's what my puddle looks like. And then I'm going to mix that. Do I have a, uh, sometimes I have a palette knife up here, but I'm just going to use this like wooden stick and mix it all together. And this is going to be what I'm going to use to base coat. And then I might just top coat that with, if I have enough, I'll use this again because <clears throat> I sand in between coats. And let's see how close this comes to Tangelo. I mean, it's pretty, this is definitely darker, so it's okay, though. Maybe I will add a little cad orange. I don't know why. It's not that important, and I definitely took some of the pigment out when I added the um, sealer, 
which Renee doesn't even suggest you do. And because I'm using um, draft board, this is like a uh, MDF. It's not even really a porous surface. It's kind of a press board. Um, but if you were painting on real wood, any type of pine or any other wood, it's porous. And I mean, draft board could be porous. I'm not really sure, positive. Anyway, let me throw that away. So I'm, I'm ready, I'm going for it. And when I base coat, I, <clears throat> I just like to do, there's a little bit of water in my brush right now because I just rinsed it out. I'm just gonna load it. And that's how I load. I kind of pull from the puddle and I have lots of paint on this brush, trust me. I could do all of them and I probably should have. <laughs> I have other ones to paint. Um, but I, I think I'm, I'm good for now. All right. And I just put the paint down. And I try to pull off the side. So you get a little messy. But see how I'm pulling towards the edge? And I'm painting the ridges out. So you see how I'm painting out the ridges? So in other words, it's, it's, it's flat. I don't know. I'm just I'm used to it because if this is just a cutesy piece so please your piece is your piece this is mine and this is how Sarah does it but this is not how all of you do it you do it your way I'm just here to share my knowledge my experience with you so that you know if you're new at this you kind of see how I do it but then watch lots of other painters and you'll see how they do it so that's it and I just try to keep the ridges off of it and I'm gonna let that dry that's base coated but I'm gonna do one more coat and look at all that that I mixed up I'll probably do because I like it to be opaque like fully covered not transparent not translucent um, so let's just give it a minute I could heat it hit it with my heat gun which is a quick way to go but I could also turn off my camera and let it dry but let me just see if this is gonna this is used for embossing, so it will burn things, so just be gentle with it. We used to have a blow dryer in class when we were um, in convention at a painting class. You would have a blow dryer just to speed up the drying time because in a class, you know, you're on a time schedule. But I just like to show you what you can do, and it's still not quite dry, so I'm just going to give it a second. I want to show you what else I've done. I've been making these pins. So what I had Joe do yesterday, and Matthew just took two of them with him to a friend. I had him uh, cut them at the same pattern with the glow forge, just into two inch. I think this is about, yeah, these are two inches tall, and I made pins out of them. Um, and I'm pretty sure in the craft stores right now, you you can probably find pumpkin shapes that you can just use. These are just. Um, that's why I love this because Renee created these and I like Renee's whimsical style. I am attracted to her artwork. Um, and that being said, you can put whatever faces you want on here. I'm just here to show you how I paint. So you could put a scary face, a traditional face, whatever kind of pumpkin you want to do. I'm just going through the steps with you of... Um, how I apply the paint to the surface and these were cut on wood um, and like I said this is the MDF just because we had it and I messed up see how I etched the back and I put I didn't click cut but anyway um, I might as well I'm gonna pull this off here and um, go ahead and base coat it because why not I could give it away Halloween is Monday like I said, and I do have a meeting. My Al-Anon home group meets on Monday. So I could um, bring these and just, oh, I have two more. I mean, they're so fun to do, but look at this. This looks like it got, got weird. Um, yeah, I'm not proficient with the Glowforge yet. So I always ask Joe to do it. He's really kind of really, I would have had to learn Inkscape I think is the program that we're using there are other programs that you can use and I never got really proficient with the um, Cricut either the Cricut uh, or the silhouette you know I never because it's a computer program I'm more of like a hands-on girl so um, 
I, I kind of leave it to Joe, which I was lucky. I was glad I was able to just go in there and do it today because I wanted to paint more and I wanted to share them with you. I did ask Renee's permission, by the way. Um, evidently, you can. I can share this with you if it's a free download. So um, I was very glad. But I did email her and she said go right ahead. So um, anywho, uh, all right, I'm talking a lot. I don't want to make this too long. But basically, you're going to do two coats on, e on your pumpkin. And then you're going to give it a sand. So let me just show you. Let me get this on here. And there's a little, cl it's clumpy. It's a little clumpy in there. I don't know what those are. But they will sand off. All right, so let me just. Okay. So these are dry. I'm going to take sandpaper, and I have this little thing of sandpaper here. All different grits and all that stuff. You can tell I've sanded orange with this. This looks a little more. Um, so I'm just going to take it and get. What happens is. The water or the liquidy part of it brings up the tooth of the wood so now that's nice and smooth and personally I love a smooth surface um, painting floating is just going to be easier if you if you do the prep prep is not my favorite guys I've I, I will skip steps that being said it it is worth it and I'm starting to learn about myself that way um, all right so I think I just want to go over this with, uh, I don't really want to put that uh, sealer on here. I just want straight paint. So I'm just going to mix a little of the CAD and the pumpkin together. I'm just going to brush mix it. So I'm just going to take my brush. I'll show you what I mean. I don't even know if I finished telling you I'm giving those pins to my peeps. I don't know. I get I distract myself okay so I'm just going like this I think I see the lumps one of the uh, paints had lumps in it and the only problem with when you mix paint is if you messed up and you had and you like got a hole in your piece you you'd want to fill it with the same color and now you don't have it so sometimes they'll you'll save the little mixture you made in a little one of those cups or something that's just a tip but we'll see how this goes Anywho, um, I don't plan on doing that. There won't be any holes in my piece. We'll be fine. I'm kind of tempted to do one of these on a, um, like a black bag, a little gift bag. I just think it would look super cute. And you could do these for craft fair so easily. Just crank them out, you know. Um, kind of assembly line it as I've done here. I love doing that. And I'm a fast painter, so for me it's really easy. And while something's drying, you can move on and do something else on another piece. So um, that's all I'm going to do for base coating. I'm trying to get these little, okay. There was little glops. All right, so basically for base coating, you just want to make sure that your surface is opaque, that there's no, you can't really see through it. But that being said, we're going to put so much stuff, like there are other layers coming. There's shading and highlighting and details. So you should be fine. So for this video, that's all we're going to do. We just base coated, and when I come back, we're going to be ready to float and get the details on here. So in other words, you're going to need an angle brush to get your shading and highlighting on. You're also going to need, I used a gold leafing pen for the outside so that it just looks nice and neat. Thank you, Tracy Moreau. And then Renee does suggest a micron, a Pigma micron pen for the detail lines, which I use a paintbrush too, but this is a very easy way to get all your fine lines done. All right, so I'll be back, you guys. Thanks for watching.